Well, so guys, hey, it's Brent Abel, webtennis.com, back with uh, the great Jeff Jacklich um, of internet fame. Um, <laughs> and we're doing this show. We still haven't come up with a name for this show yet. It's uh, who knows what it's going to be. You know, if you've got some, if you watch any of these episodes and you got some name that would that would be appropriate, <laughs> let us know. What we're really doing here is something unscripted. One day Jeff asked me a question. The next day I asked Jeff a question. And we just kind of go. And uh, we just finished recording one episode, and, 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 uh, which was my day to uh, ask Jeff a question. So, Jeff, talk about totally unscripted. You don't have any question prepared for me. It's my turn for you to ask me a question. I, so, I just thought of one, though, so, so I'm good. All right. Let's go. What do you got? <laughs> Okay. Uh, the other day I asked you like what your greatest, uh, you know, your, your horror story, you know, match play horror story that actually cost you the match. Yes. So, so today, um, it, I just thought, okay, so, so tell me, tell me, uh, an actual, uh, story where, where you, you collected yourself and came up with a victory where you actually managed to corral the, uh, you know, the wild thoughts, the all the people who are on stage in your head telling you this is not your day. Um, those people, the crowd, all the buddies off court who are you're looking at going, oh, boy, you know, starting to tell the story. We talked about that the other yeah, day. Storytelling. Yeah. So, you know, somehow you've got to you've got to, you know, kick all those people off stage in your mind and get down to uh, being in the moment and kind of going, you know what? Um, you know, I always kind of put it in these terms. I've got to come to this realization that says, um, do you want to be here right now? And if you can get there, now, now you actually have like space. So you, you, you know, if you can think of something right well, now. Well, I've got, I've got two matches in um, vastly different uh, time zones of my, of my senior tournament career. And one was uh, when I was really just starting to figure out how to play. And this was back in the 35s. And it was the California State 35s, which used to be played over at Harbor Point in Alameda. And... I don't know if they still even have the tournament anymore, but it used to be a, a really good tournament. And we had all, all the top guys in Northern California. And uh, I won it one year. Uh, and along the way, somewhere like in the quarters, I think, I had to play a, a recent NorCal Hall of Famer, Larry Dodge. Yeah. And, yeah, Larry's, you know, back in the day, he was, he was a brute. I mean, just a big heavy hitting guy and he just was smiling the whole time because he just loved to play he couldn't care less you know right. if, if if he went down it was like uh, yeah yeah this was a fun day and you're kind of going <laughs> could you get a little more pissed please um so i'm playing larry he wins the first set i think pretty easily six two he's up two breaks in the second four one and uh he's He's a legend. He's even then at 35. So I mean, he's a few years older. So he was, but he was already a legend. And right. I was just thinking, wow, this is kind of the level. This is where I, I, I want to be going. And um, I had sort of thought when I first went out there, because I'd already beaten a good guy or two before in the, in, in the earlier rounds. And I thought, man, well, you know, maybe, maybe I really got something here, you know? And, and so then next thing I know, I'm down six, two, four, one. Larry Dodge is serving, and I'm just kind of like, well, put the shovel down. I think, <laughs> I think, I think it's time. Uh, and I think someone had said, "You got to find another way to lose, Brent." And so, so I didn't really think of it that way. I wasn't that negative about it, but I just said, "I said, let's stop thinking about." strategy let's stop thinking about what i have to do to actually win this match to beat the great larry dodge let's just relax and hit some balls and just let's just see what happens let's kind of clean the slate clear out the mind don't be and you mentioned you know what are the guys going to think what am i going to think oh my god right. when this thing's done <laughs> let's just not build a story and let's just kind of let's just Let's just feel what's going on out here. So I swear, the next thing I know is I've won like the next 
10 games. <laughs> and I'm and I'm going, wow. And I go, and some of her voices going, hey, hey, idiot man, don't think about how you did this. <laughs> right. Just and don't think about the finish line. Just keep going. Right. <laughs> Just keep going. And so uh, that's what I did. I ended up winning the third set. And I will never forget uh, this moment. And and this moment to me was sort of the epiphany moment more than, hey, you know what? You can be down a set and two breaks and still come back. It's very doable. But the epiphany moment for me, the aha moment for me was when I won match point and we were walking up to shake hands. And Larry's walking up and I'm thinking, oh, my God, do I feel bad for this guy because he's going to walk off the court. And the, <laughs> and the guys are going to go, how did you do that? Right. And and he comes up and all of a sudden, right before we about to shake hands, this big wide grin comes across his face. And he goes, that was really well done. Really <laughs> well done. You played fantastic tennis. I'm happy for you, man. Congratulations. And I'm going, thanks, man, because I would have found the Campanile at Berkeley and with a high-powered rifle and started shooting people. Right. Right. So that was a big deal. That that really yeah. kind of taught me a couple things like, you know, this is doable. You can be down, uh, mm -hmm. way down, and you can still come back if you don't fight it, if you don't. I mean, we all talk about, well, you got to find their way to lose, You got or you got to go to plan B. Um, yeah, maybe you do sometimes, you know, maybe sometimes you're just missing plan A and all you got to do is just start making some shots. Yeah. Or maybe plan C is, look, let's just, let's just chill out and let's just hit some balls and play and see what happens. Don't think about the result. Don't think about, you know, look, yeah, he's yeah. serving a 4-1 in the second. He could be beating you 2-1, man, it's possible, you know, <laughs> uh, so big deal, but, but. The big thing was that smile that he gave me. And it was so genuine. It wasn't BS. He wasn't trying to, right. uh, which I've had other opponents recently where, you know, you beat them and they come up and before they start shaking hands, they go, well, nice going. But, you know, my hammy today, I really wasn't sure. Right. Um, this was the total <laughs> opposite, right? Yeah. The other match, Jeff, was recently, was actually this last year in 2018 uh, when, and maybe we've already talked about this because I know I've, I, I've told you this story before, but I don't know if I've done this on our on our little uh, soon to be named show or uh, remains to be named show. <laughs> but it was uh, my first match, his second round match. Uh, I got a buy in the indoors in March in Houston. <clears throat> and uh, a guy, Al Yearwood, who ended up being one of the top guys. He ended up ranked number four in the country this year. Yeah. I mean, for for 2018. And I played him once before in Atlanta a couple of years prior in the clay, and we'd had a close match, but I'd, I'd, I'd won that like, I don't know, three and four. So um, I knew who he was. I knew he was a good player. It was a bad draw for both of us. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and the night before, I had had just a horrible night's sleep. Uh, it was the beginning of the week of that tournament, and I didn't know at the time, but I was starting to come down with bronchitis. Awesome. which I sort of developed the whole week. <laughs> By the time I got home, you know, I'm in the Houston airport the last day, just completely covered up, shivering, just go, please, God, get me, get me back to Palm Springs. <laughs> but this was the first day of it. And that night, I had maybe two hours of sleep. I mean, I just slept terribly. I showed up, and uh, and I just was like in this fog. And here it is indoors. I don't play much indoors, so I couldn't see the ball anyway. Yeah. And then I got the two hours of sleep thing going on. And the next thing you know is he's serving at 5-2 in the first. Here we go. Hello. Back back with a double breaker again. There seems to be a, there's a pattern going on here. <laughs> right. And uh, But I'm serving at 2-4 in the first. I end, up, uh, I end up getting broken. And as I'm walking across the chain sides, I'm thinking, I said to myself, well, there goes the team, and the team meaning, you know, the 70s team to try to make the, the USA four-player team yeah, yeah, for, yeah. for the World Cup, which was not going to be until six months later in September. 
but I'd already won a big cat two in January in the desert and a small little tournament prior to that. So all I had to do was come down to Houston and just take care of business and not be dumb. And there was a chance <laughs> I might be able to get on this, this team, which is yeah, kind of one of the things all of us right. senior guys want to do. So get broken, crossing sides, and I'm going, well, there goes the team. And I'm not, and I'm just kind of going, I'm just sort of resigning myself to, to it. Yeah. And uh, so we switch sides and here it is. He's serving at five, two. And I'd sort of, for, I just sort of taken all the pressure off of me. I'd taken all the expectations of all the <laughs> build up from January and February to this tournament of just don't screw this tournament up, man. Just don't, you know, right. Got to take that phrase and put it on the side. Yeah, I got to do just, it. So it's just me and the Houston Ebola virus hanging out indoors. <laughs> That's right. Boy, <laughs> are we having a good time. And uh, so, you know, I think he starts off that game at 5 2, he double faults. And I'm going, hmm, okay. And, and then the next thing you know is we get into a kind of a. You know, a game, and I'm starting. I finally start to crack a sweat, and the fog from the two hours of sleep starts to dissipate. Yeah. And I start to play. I just start to compete and play and forget about the team thing, forget about expectations. I grind out the first set in a breaker. Woohoo! I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just, I just kind of steamroll them in the second set, six one. So, I guess that's. You know, and I came away from that sort of realizing that if Brent, if you really think about it, and I probably, and I, I can't tell you for sure if I thought about this or not during that match with Al uh, a year ago, but I may have thought, you know what? You did have that match with the great Larry Dodge. Yeah. So it is possible. possible. Even, if you, even if you have the two hour fog thing going on asleep, exactly. right? it's, it's possible. So, um, yeah, I mean, I guess. Well, for you me, know, I mean, the, the other, you know, part of the part of this, uh, you know, this journey, you know, when you're in mid match, you know, and you know, approaching the end of the first set, because um, things shift mentally, physically between first set, second set. You know, uh, you win the first set, let down second set, or whatever. You know, those things happen. But also, you know, your opponent. Um, you know, there's the loose variables there. Like for him, all of a sudden he opens at five two with a double break with, with a with a double fault. And so, you know, I've been in that position, and and when that happens, it, for me it triggers a little. It, there's a little you know a little green light that goes on and goes, okay, is this guy now thinking about closing out, and and how much personal pressure is he putting on himself? Right. And do I need to just go? Okay, we just need to grind four returns into the court any way I can run, kick, spit, cut in line in the food court, you know, whatever it takes. Well, <laughs> you know? the bottom line is you got to make him play. Yeah. To shove a ball back in play and make him have to, you know, make him touch the ball to win the point. Right. And because now does the double fault indicate his own little he's he's feeling a little pressure on himself now right well it could be the voice so, popping off in his head going brent come yeah, on man look look man i'm up five two against you i just need you to give me this game so right. just go ahead and give it to me and we'll be good i'm trying to close out the great brent abel well i don't think i don't think the word great <laughs> was was any part of the voice but he might have been thinking you know hey i really hope I really hope he continues to play. And, and part of my play with him getting up 5-2 was I did make some errors that maybe I normally don't. Yeah. So there's maybe that thought, and I've had this thought before, which I just go, shut that thing up, which is, come on, man, just give the rest to me right here, you know? Yeah. I don't, I don't want to have to serve this out. Um, <laughs> you know, yeah. I, you know I, I remember another yeah. match. I remember another match. Um, in the National 60 hard courts one year, I'm playing literally the great David Nash. And and uh, and he was seated, I don't know, third, and it was loaded that year. And I was maybe a 30-second seat or something like this. <laughs> I don't even know if they have 30-second seats. But I'm playing this guy, and I go in there, I got nothing to lose. I got nothing to lose with this guy. And sure enough, I win the first set. And then I go, 
hmm, I do have something to lose. And, <laughs> and he ends up winning the second set. And then I come out in the third and I really just kind of go, okay, you've proven to yourself you can do this in the first. I get up, I get up uh, a break. So he's serving at 2-5 in the third. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking the first couple of points, God, man, God, I, I might have to serve this out at 5-3. <laughs> I don't know if I've got the cojones to be able to serve this thing out against the great David Nash at 5-3 and third. And so then another voice just said, hey, man, how cool would that be? How cool would that be to be able to, he holds right here. That's cool. And then you get to close it out. Come on. Come yeah. on. Well, Take them downtown, baby. Come, come on. on. <laughs> and so that whole thing of, of going, God, this would be great to close it out with me serving, loosens me up, and I break them to win the match. So I don't know. What, what, what are we talking about? We're talking all about this false advertising. We're talking about all this BS that we can tell ourselves when we're down, yeah. as opposed to what you said initially with the question, which is, how can we really screw this up by thinking these thoughts like, you know, well, what are the fellas going to think? Um, you know, if uh, if I got a girlfriend, uh, you know, what's she going to think? Again, like we said yesterday, if I lose, is she going to start hanging out with the pickleball guys? <laughs> a fate worse than death, right? <laughs> Absolutely. There's a lot of wailing and gnashing of teeth going on there. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, did I answer your question, man? Huh? Absolutely. I think, you know, and, and I think the, the, you know, to, to, to reduce it all down, I think what you explained is, is this, is, is really the simplicity of, of having the, um, the awareness moment to say, it's a choice. I have a choice to make right now. I can either continue to wallow in the self-talk that keeps me in this place, or I can make a, a conscious choice to, to, to turn from that literally and talk differently to myself and to say, you know what? Um, why not me today? Why not me to go and take care of business today and, and make, a, make a new choice right now and let's see how this works out. Um, so I think that's the, that's the, you know, in its simplest terms, you know, but the challenge is again, to have the moment of awareness and can I put my ego off to the side and, and, um, yeah, I mean, we, 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 we end up fighting quote unquote, fighting the game so many different ways. Yeah. And one of those ways is the self-talk when we're down in a match and, uh, we can self-talk our ways absolutely by 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 whatever it is we're saying we're we're just helping the guy over there close it out yeah yeah exactly let me and you know how can i help you out today sir yeah. i am in the serv I'm, yeah. I'm i'm in the service industry i'd be happy to yeah. take care of you today so let me hit I'm, the first return into the net let me chunk the second one wide yeah and then let i'll me, take my uh, racket and i'll wing it against the back fence yeah and, and, you know. and i suppose that won't pump you up at all i, I guess, yeah. I guess. So anyway no i think that was great brenny that was really good i think that i think it's important that you know the what we share here are live you know actual events in our own tennis uh, careers that shed light on these moments to you know that you know you're not you're not the Teflon Don, you know, you, you, you gotta, you know, yeah, that's it. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that we're, we're human. Right. And, and we've had to deal with these things as well. Um, excellent. So, excellent. Well, we're going to wrap this up today. Um, what's the next so what do thing? We, what do we want everybody to do? Uh, well, if you liked this thing and, and again, we, we always like to say that you should, because we're so likable, there's a button somewhere to uh to like uh the next thing would be to share i mean let your buds know just how cool we are and yeah. actually if you want some social status out there when you share this this makes you look incredible yeah for sure everyone oh god man you you're you're sharing that you're you're amazing um what about subscribe oh my gosh how could you like and share and not subscribe <laughs> I mean, it's the gotta, trifecta. You got to have the trifecta. <laughs> Absolutely. But then there's the quadfecta, 
which uh -oh. would be the last but most important thing we want you guys to do is we want to hear from you. If yes. you've got a question, if you've got a comment, down below in the comment section, let her rip. Let her go. Absolutely. Guys, as always, love uh, hanging out with you, and uh, you got to get out there and make it a spectac a spectac a spectacular day. Yeah. E easy, not not easy for me to say. <laughs> JJ, always fun, man. We'll uh, we'll do this again tomorrow. See you on the other side. All right, dude. <laughs> Bye.